Are psychedelics dangerous? Through the 1960s and beyond, there were some real horror stories related to psychedelic use. Johns Hopkins University, in addition to a few other institutions, have recently been granted permission to study the safety of psychedelics. And here's what they found. Some claim that psychedelic use is addictive, but researchers now consider psychedelics to be non-addictive. They say that the intensity of the psychedelic trip tends to dissuade most people from wanting to repeat the experience quickly. Also, the human body quickly builds tolerance to LSD, meaning that if you take LSD today, tomorrow you'll need much more LSD to achieve the same effect, and even more the next day. And the molecular makeup of LSD and psilocybin are so similar that cross-tolerance occurs between them, meaning that if you take LSD today, you'll need more psychedelic mushrooms tomorrow. In an attempt to gauge whether or not certain psychedelics might be addictive, researchers attempt to train animals to self-administer psychedelics, but these attempts have been generally unsuccessful. When a rat is given water with cocaine, it will continue drinking that water until it dies. But when a rat is given water mixed with LSD, it drinks the LSD water once, then never drinks it again. In fact, psychedelics are often considered to be anti-addictive, meaning they can be used to counter addictions to other substances like alcohol or nicotine or opiates. Now let's talk about overdose. Well, in 1974, eight people snorted inordinate amounts of LSD after mistaking it for cocaine. They developed comatose states, hypothermia, vomiting, gastric bleeding, and respiratory problems, but they all survived with hospitalization. Many of the reports of serious harmful effects of taking psychedelics are from case reports rather than during controlled studies. There have been two cases of reported deaths by psilocybin overdose, but researchers argue that there's too little information to rule out the possibility of cross-contamination, meaning maybe it was actually something else that caused their death. There have also been some case studies where people thought they'd taken a psychedelic, such as LSD, but had actually taken a different drug. For example, a married couple took what they thought was LSD, leading to the wife's death. The media blamed the death on LSD, but the autopsy revealed that they had actually taken a different drug, 2,5-B-N-B-O-M-E. Psychedelic-related deaths from car accidents and other reckless behaviors do sometimes occur, but as far as researchers are able to confirm, there are no known deaths caused by overdose to LSD, psilocybin, or mescaline. We can compare this to alcohol-related deaths, which toll 3 million globally every year. And every year there are 350,000 opioid-related deaths. Now, researchers have recorded psilocybin lethal overdose in rats, and they extrapolated this rat lethal overdose and calculated the lethal overdose for humans. Assuming a human would be 60 kilograms or about 130 pounds, the lethal overdose would likely be 1.7 kilograms or about 3.7 pounds of dried mushrooms, which is 17 kilograms or 37 pounds of fresh mushrooms. The lethal dose of pure psilocybin has been extrapolated to be about six grams, which is a thousand times the effective dose of six milligrams. Now, several researchers indicate that the major harm related to psychedelic mushrooms is from misidentification of mushrooms, as there are many poisonous species of mushrooms that can easily be mistaken for psychedelic mushrooms. The number of deaths from this, though, is unknown. Now, the closer a drug's lethal dose is to its effective dose, the more dangerous that drug is. For instance, the lethal dose of heroin is only about five times the effective dose. But with LSD, 
the lethal dose is 1,000 times more than the effective dose. Therefore, it's virtually impossible to overdose on LSD. There has been one recorded LSD overdose, and this was Tusco, a male Indian elephant at the Oklahoma City Zoo. On August 3rd, 1962, researchers from the University of Oklahoma injected Tusco with 297 milligrams of LSD. This is nearly 3,000 times the human recreational dose. Within five minutes, Tusco collapsed to the ground, and an hour and 45 minutes later, Tusco was dead. But it is disputed whether it was the LSD that killed Tusco or the tranquilizer they administered to keep him sedated throughout the experience. Although psychedelics aren't considered addictive and don't appear to cause organ damage or neurotoxicity, there are some short-term side effects, including dizziness, blurred vision, weakness, tremors, and increased blood pressure. Using pooled raw data from eight double-blind, placebo-controlled experimental studies conducted between 1999 and 2008, including 110 healthy subjects who had received between one and four oral doses of psilocybin, researchers found that psilocybin dose dependently induced profound changes in mood, perception, thought, and self-experience. But most subjects describe the experience as pleasurable, enriching, and non-threatening. There were some acute adverse reactions, which were characterized by strong dysphobia, anxiety, panic, but occurred only at the two highest doses of psilocybin in a relatively small number of subjects. All of these acute adverse drug reactions were successfully managed through interpersonal support and did not require psychopharmacological intervention, meaning they did not require a different kind of pharmaceutical in order to be solved. Follow-up questionnaires to this study indicated no subsequent drug abuse, persisting perception disorders, prolonged psychosis, or other long-term impairments of functioning in any of the subjects. The researchers concluded that the administration of modest psilocybin doses to healthy, high-functioning, and well-prepared subjects in the context of a carefully monitored research environment carries an acceptable level of risk. But of course, this still leaves many questions unanswered. Are there certain people who are at higher risk of negative side effects of psychedelic use? How important is the guide in these cases, or is it safe to experiment with psychedelics alone? Right now, the research does not indicate answers to these questions, but the research is growing every single day. And hopefully we will continue to learn more about these substances in order to mitigate risk.